Hello folks and welcome back to Stasis Bone Totem and when last we left off we managed to work our way down and deeper and down. We've used the weird skull lever thing and uh, we've run into a door that we can't enter because of, I don't know, something. It can make a horrible noise. That's about as much as I've determined. We've created this device and read a PDA. Now. <clears throat> I had um, tried to figure out where to go and I ended up uh, clicking on all the statues and it turns out after you turn all the skulls you're supposed to go back to the third one that didn't have a skull to click on and it reveals this this little pattern here we've seen that what before what do we have here rudimentary technology I don't like the look of that thing they shine like stars now that pattern we saw all the way back up the tippy top, so we'll head up there. I think that's what we've got to put on the round disc thing just outside the door that we had to go through. Here we go. Stone disc! Yeah, just as I figured. Wow. Okay. The engineering, it's... Amazing. For its age. You said this was a calendar? Rudimentary technology. Primitive belief system. Oh. Okay. Okay. Hold up. Right, this is going to get frustrating because I'm going to have to keep going to and from. Right, let's go all the way back down because that sounds like the horrible noise that that thing downstairs makes. Man, run on those steps in your bare feet. That's got to be sore. Right. Body on gong. Pump. Oh, scree. Pump. Oh, scree. Oh, God. Pump. Oh. Scree. <laughs> Pump hurrah. Scree. I can't do it. Pump hurrah. Scree. Okay. Audio waveform matched to the god instrument. Hey, there we go. Was that a fucking missile? A flammable oil like substance within the large earthen receptacle has seeped into the propelled, uh, prepared canal. This 
smells like oil. That's your flame source. Assuming our new AI overlord knows what it's talking about. 100% accuracy prediction. I am Newman. I am Newman. <coughs> and we don't have a lighter anymore. Spark it off, maybe? Now I'm back to being stumped. Damn it! Okay. Oh yeah, because we used the lighter and turned it into a flamethrower, didn't we? Uh So I'm guessing I've got to light this thing somehow. what I'm supposed to do here because I got these but I don't apparently survey data is loaded but that tells me nothing Mapping task interrupted. Um, I seem to be able to interact with. All right, let's let's current. Let's take a look again. Okay, so I can't do anything with those. Maybe I'll go back to the other map. Charge detected. I have found the first bomb. It's not a... Is this really something we want him to try and do? Who else can do it? Continue, Moses. <laughs> Disarm that blast charge. Disarm all of them. Okay. Alright. Uh, so we need 1 to 12. Uh, 
three to four. Seven to eight. This bomb will make no loud noises. There we go. Good job, Mose. Okay, here we go. You've got another charge to take. I have found the second bomb. Be careful, sweetheart. Two to twelve. Three to five. The second bomb is silenced. Not bad. Not bad. Right. Now, where's the last one? We seismic charge detected. The third bomb. I see it. Watch yourself, Bear. Okay. Zero to thirteen. I like that this is simple and not at all. Uh, painful. Ten to eleven. Now, actually, it's 20 past 11. <laughs> uh, oh, bloody funny I am. I have defused the third bomb. Wonderful, my friend. Your ingenuity continues to inspire. Okay, so I've got all the bombs. I guess now I go and fit them over yonder. Underwater seismic charge, boosh, boom, blam. <laughs> Gonna cook me a ham. We uh. want to take a look. Charlie Mac, the noises go here. Yeah, bear. All three of them. Are we sure it's not too much? We want to preserve the air pocket inside, not collapse the whole thing. Computer knows what it's doing. At least that's what you always say. Yeah, but Moses wasn't involved then. Do it, Bear. My Mac. Okay. All bombs are ready. I hope the others appreciate you, my friend. The way they shoot. They are my family. They are. I don't like how that cut off. Oh, we got a flashback. The refrigerator. Charlie Mac are at the funeral. Bears are not allowed. Now, obviously, to move the story along, we click on the refrigerator, but that's not how you find collectibles. I hate the fact that you're walking so slow, sir. Collectibles in a vision, perhaps. Ooh. 
Wow, you are walking so slow. It won't let me run. No collectible? Fine, we go to fridge. Ah. Can't actually do anything here. Oh, wait, toy box. Look at this go. Mac is right. My fault. I am. Um not a good bear. All you have to do is blink. Moses? Moses, where are you? Kane. I could hear that from here. I am okay, Charlie Mac. I am brave and strong. I am in a cave. There is something here. Something enormous. Look at that. Mac, it's definitely metallic. Yeah. Curved, looks like. Fluid dynamic. Moses, keep looking. See if you can find more of it. My Mac. My money's on that Russian sub. A puff of debris and agitated sand bleeds from the gaping wound inflicted on the rock wall. Quiet thumps and rustling of falling debris echo within the chamber, and the glowing colours shift and move in rhythm in this pocket of dead current. A softness looms over this alcove, blunting the distant rumbling of the thermal plant. A carpet of glittering bioluminescent lights pool across the floor, radiating out from a mass of plant-like growths that bleed out from under the metal structure. And the super-colossal bullet-shaped structure, aged and dilapidated, juts out from the rock wall. Corrosion and rust suffuse the metallic plates, its curved hull reflecting an unsettling kaleidoscope of shifting blue and green lights. And luminant radiation seeps from a gap in the rock wall the glow catching on passing debris and swimming microorganisms. All manner of exhaust-like apertures descend deeper into the edifice. Wispy blades of seaweed poke out like nose hairs. Okay. Let's follow the blue line. A slow and perpetual metallic mouldering crawls over the outer skin. A testament to the immutable decades this construction has endured. Rumble tum rubble tumbles down from the collapsed rocky aperture. Clouds of agitated dust billowing through crevices like fumes from a crust exhaust. And the star-hilted sword backlit by a radiant cog. An infamous emblem of the long-defunct Soviet Union and a decrepit batch of ownership for whoever built this structure. Yeah, it's the nuclear submarine. The designation likely details purpose and classification, though intervening ages have likely sentenced any associated meaning into forgotten obscurity. Charlie Mac, you should see this. Oh my god, look at it. It's 
It's a sub. And by no means a modern one. It's Soviet. Oh my god. The subject of much debate when it was found. A new variable in an already impossible equation. It's sunk here. What happened to the crew? They survived the crash. For a time. But there was no escape. There was only sacrifice. And pain. Explains the bodies we saw. Uh, you know what? You wouldn't get me under the water at any point ever like this. The thought of being on that sub and trapped underwater with no escape... I'd have put a bullet in my brain. I wouldn't even give it a second thought. Tendrils of algae grow from the gnarled pillar of rock, floating slack in still currents like ancient torn flags caught in time. The shifting curtain of light radiates down from an air pocket above, cavern floor reflections waltzing in tune to the shifting liquid surface. Tears and punctures within the hull allow cursive glances inside, though no details emerge from the darkness beyond. Well, there we are. The water surface shimmers and oscillates, agitated by the recent emergence of the rover. A barricade of rock bisects the cavern, a parade of natural pillars comprised of converging stalagmites and stalactites. Gnarled knots of rust ring the airlock's circum circumference. The hinges malformed into orange clumps of oxidized metal. Gnarled knots of ring... Oh, rust ring the... Oh, okay. Gnarled not. Okay, that's the same. And that's the same. Still in pretty good shape, all things considered. Guessing we can't just drive it out of here? I don't think that would go well for anybody. No. Um, absolutely not. I doubt you could even get pressure in there now with all the rust and corrosion. A stubby antenna pokes out from the submarine's head, its cabling detached and rerouted to the impromptu dish below. <clears throat> A quiet ensemble of plopping echoes throughout the cavern as drops of briny water tumble from an unseen inverted forest of rocky spires above primordial air dampens fur and moistens rock amidst the thick aroma of earth and salt. An unusual transmitter appears to be state of the art for the 1980s, however scuff marks and disturbed dust give the impression that it has been used to broadcast a signal in recent years. Reams of clag have been tracked onto the vessel's surface, a mess of footprints and wheeled grooves and machined labour and human traffic have crushed the underlying rocks into rubble, submerging them into the shallow mud. Buried shards shift under footfall like pebbles in a lake bed. And the aged paper bears the marks of a violent past. Dark red stains, now brown with age, mar the margins. Let's check the old rusty hatch. Mac. Dangerous. Yeah, Bear, you got that right. Grenade rigged. It'll explode if it's opened. They were trying to keep something out. Okay, right. Sorry. Sorry, Moes. Damn it. I thought there was going to be a death scene. Question is, were they trying to keep something a giant out? giant plate. No, Moses. It's a satellite dish. They were 
are trying to contact the outside world. It hums. I can feel it. It is still active, yes. A modified version of the submarine's communication systems. After all this time, it's still... transmitting? It is how the site was first discovered. By Kane Deep Sea Rovers. Ironic. Only now, after no one is left to rescue, was a distress signal finally received. Horrifying. Machined labor and human traffic of okay, we've seen that one. Uh, reams of clag have been tracked into the vessel's surface, a mess of footprints and wheeled grooves. Half a dozen light cages hang from hooks drilled into the rock wall, starved of a functioning power source. They dangle uselessly in the darkness. The decrepit architecture gliss glisters in unusual and unsettling ways as radiating light from below collides with its surface. The reflected light creates patterns on the nearby walls akin to flowing water and rippling currents. The two corpses, their legs and sleeves thickened with ancient dirt and muck, lie as if collapsed into a deep, relieving sleep. An air of terminal camaraderie haunts their final slumber. A clothed skeletal form lies prostrate, absent flesh given the appearance of uniforms several sizes too large. And the clusters of glowing lights emitted by fungal growths dance in tandem with shimmering lustre spilling out from within the crystals. And large, dark stains bleed out from accumulated dirt. Splatters speak of something spilled or cut open long ago. The makeshift tripod built from metal rods stands at the head of a grave mound. <clears throat> An interior of the warm pots is filled with blackened lumps and shards of human bone. Oh, we've got a dog. They stayed here. here. But they are gone now. Yeah, if they sunk, how long could they have survived? With whatever supplies they had, not long. Pretty light. Mac, he's right. Look. Bioluminescence. Explains a lot. Hang on, I want to pop back here quickly. Wasn't there something I could read here? Yeah, document. Damn it, I almost missed that. <clears throat> Scanning and translating. My dearest Anastasia, I ride to you from the ocean's depths with a heavy heart and a longing soul. I fear that I may never see you again, and I must pour out my heart to you in this letter lest it burst from the weight of my love. I have seen an incredible event that has shaken me to the core. As I stood upon the deck of Alima, my face and arms on fire, I tussled with the captain. Then the shadows came upon us. They had assailed our captain, intent on dragging him down to their watery lair. I watched in horror, and then something miraculous happened. They stopped their attack. Instead, they took him in their loving arms and carried him away. I do not know why they spared him or what fate awaits him in this underwater kingdom. But I know I saw a glimmer of mercy in their cold eyes, and I felt a strange sense of awe and wonder as if the very fabric of the universe had been torn asunder. My love for you will burn bright until my end. Yours forever, Georgie. He's a seaman. Right. And what do we have over here? Damn. Oh, this is the bodies they were talking about, eh? Okay. That makes more sense. We've got another document here. Oh, wow. This one's actually got some data entries. Well, you know what, folks? 
We're going to read this when we return next time in Stasis Bone Totem. Until then, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this installment. We finally found the sub. Excellent. And progress is being made towards the end of the story. Good stuff. Until we meet again, see you all again in the next one. Bye-bye.